Hey y'all, have you ever gone to your smoker or grill and found out you do not have the right accessories to get the job well done? Today I'm going to review some of my best bets for grilling and smoking. Hi y'all, Don here with Southern Backyard Cooking. Today's video, I'll be demonstrating some of the essential accessories that I use when grilling and smoking. If you like my video, please make sure you subscribe, ring that bell. That'll allow you to follow my site and get notifications anytime I post a new video. Alright, the first thing I'm going to cover is gloves. Uh, you need a good set of gloves, whether it's vinyl or nitrile. There, you need to have a good set of these plenty of them. I usually buy them in boxes of a hundred, sometimes get two or three boxes at a time. One of the things you can do with these, you need to have these on, especially when you're touching raw meats. Chicken, for example, really bad about cross-contamination. The other thing gloves are nice for is picking up hot stuff. So with these cotton gloves, these are real cheap. You can put a vinyl or a nitrile glove right over them that way it protects it a little bit more but you can just slide them on and then slide the glove right on top of this it'll give a lot of protection for the heat this is a very inexpensive way to do that now when you do this make sure you get one size larger than you normally wear because these cotton gloves are going to make your hand a little larger and you don't want it so tight on you the things that I really love are these eco grip gloves these run about $30 a pair, but they're rated up to 450 degrees. When you put them on, it's real easy to pick up meats, hot things, but really good when you want to break up like a pulled pork or something. One of the other things that really nice is picking up stuff is these little claws. These are very inexpensive, $7-$8. Up and you can pick up hot things like briskets and roast and shoulder butts, pulled pork. It also allows you to break them up really easy if you would like to do that. Alright y'all, the next thing I'd like to talk about is why do I carry my meats in? So aluminum pans are the my favorite. I have a half size which is about a 9 by 13 and a third size which is about a 7 by 13. Uh, these go really good into chafing dishes so if you need to keep them hot but they also, it's real easy to wrap with aluminum foil or in a lot of cases they actually come with an aluminum lid that will slide right over it and just crimp right down. These are good for preparing my meats when I'm putting my rubs and stuff on them as well as pulling them off the grill and storing them. The next thing we're going to talk about is what do we use to turn or place our meats onto the grill. Well first you want a nice clean grill. This is a little cheap, inexpensive. They're about seven or eight dollars. But this does this scraper here doesn't have the wire bristles on it. This works really good on a hot grill, but also works better if I take and dip it down in some water. These little circles that are in here will hold that water to where when I scrape it, it's actually steaming cleaning that grill, which is really nice. So you need a set of tongs and I always say get two sets. Dealing with chicken you want to have one set of tongs for the raw meat and one set of tongs for the cooked meat. So I usually use these two. One of them is an 8 inch and one's a 10 inch. That way I can tell raw cooked. That makes it real easy. These are really good for picking them up, turning them, as well as removing them. Sometimes though you need a an actual spatula. This is a little six inch spatula here. It's three inches wide, wood handle. I love using these. I've used these for years, years, and years. But these make it real easy to pick up something and flip it over like a burger or a steak. But it also is strong enough to pick up a pork butt up underneath it to pick it. Then you have to have a basting brush. This one has rubber tines on it. So it's real easy to pick up sauce and it'll pick up quite a bit and then brush it right on. It makes it go really well. Alright y'all, the next items I use is butcher paper or aluminum foil. Okay, 
So these are both 18 inches. I mean, they're 18 inches this way. Uh, there are different times when I use the butcher paper versus the aluminum foil. Uh, most of the time if I'm cooking a brisket or a pork butt, something like that, when it hits to about 170, 180 degrees, it usually goes into a stall. For those, I like to use butcher paper. Just wrap it in the butcher paper, put it back on there, turn the temperature up, it'll cook right on up to temperature. I like to pull my brisket, my pulled pork, at about a 203 degrees. When it comes to ribs, I really like using aluminum foil. Because when I do my ribs, I either like to put some beer or some apple cider vinegar right in the bottom. That helps it steam up a little bit better. And aluminum foil does that really well. All right, next thing we're going to talk about is cutting foods. Whether it's meat, vegetables, whatever. First thing is you need a good cutting board. This is a good commercial type of cutting board. It is 15 by 20 washes real well and it's very easy to sanitize. Um, when I come to cutting, I like Chef Knife. This one's a Dow Strong. It's in the Gladiator series. It's a little 9 inch blade. Makes it very easy for cutting. Very easy to sharpen. So anytime I'm doing any vegetables, trimming stuff up in advance, I like to use the Chef Knife. Now once my meats are finished and cooking, I need a good carving knife. This also is a Dalstrung, but this one is in the Shogun series. It's a 12 inch blade and it works really good cutting briskets, any kind of chicken, any, any of that type of stuff works really, really good. I really like this. It's long enough that it'll go through a brisket and it's sharp enough that where I don't have to put a lot of pressure down. And that's what you don't want to do when you're cutting meat. You don't want to put pressure down. You want to let the knife do the work. Now, this is probably the most important thing you need to have in your arsenal for grilling and smoking. And that's a thermometer. In some cases you just need an instant read thermometer. This one's really inexpensive. I think I get two of these for like $20. They have some of these that are really good, a lot of people recommend, that are about $100. To me, this does just as well. Uh, two of them for $20. You know, for $100, I can buy one every uh, year and have enough to last me five years and, and probably be ahead. But the nice thing about this is you can calibrate it. It has auto off, so as soon as I close it up, the temperature goes off, so it doesn't use my battery up too much to change the battery. It's really easy right here. Just turn it. It's got one of those little round batteries that are about the size of a nickel. It takes, even though it says instant read, it takes about a second, to one to two seconds, to actually read the temperature. But these are really great, especially for thin cuts of meat like chicken. I want to make sure they're done. The next area is wireless thermometers. Okay, This wireless thermometer, it comes with two meat probes. They're real easy. They just plug into the side here. has three spots. The third probe is actually a probe that you can put in and clip to anywhere in your grill to read the inside temperature of the grill or smoker. It has a base and a wireless receiver. This has a 300 foot range, so it's really, really good. This has alarms on it so I can set what temperature. It'll alert me, like a little alarm clock does, that I'm at that temperature and it's go ready to go and pull the meat off. This is a meter. These A lot of people really like these. This one is about $70. It has about a 35 foot range. They make one with a 165 foot range and it's about $100. Uh, these are really nice. The wood case here is actually a charger for it. Uh, it just takes a AA battery in the back. These just go into your meat. The negative about these, one is the cost. The two is I like to use two probes if I'm cooking uh, different things. So I'd have to have two of these. So that's either $140 or $200. My little wireless receiver here runs about $35 and it does just as good a job. The main difference is this one is going to use an app on your phone, so you can get that, but it's all still Bluetooth. That gives you that 30 to, to 165 feet range. 
and it depends on the cost of what you want to spend. Me, I'd rather spend my money on more food than a lot of really, really expensive accessories. Hey y'all, I really hope you enjoyed my video today. If you did, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, that way you get the notifications when new videos coming out, and we'll see you on the next time.